Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Odyssey Touching Base number two. First one was about 10 weeks ago on the uh, Friday that we were supposed to start the hackathon. Obviously, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, and that first session was all about us uh, uh, gathering with you in times of uncertainty. Corona was just kicking in. Nobody really knew what effect that would have on uh, not only the hackathon and, and related stuff, but also our lives in general. We're now uh, 10 weeks further, and this session is a little bit different. As you can see, we're in a different space of the Odyssey office. And uh, this session is going to be much more about us giving you, I would say, some clarity. We're not going to give everything away. I, I would agree. About what's, what's been happening and what's yeah. coming. Um, as you can imagine, I'm sat here with Mr. Rugge van Zaudam himself. How are you feeling today? Hi, everyone. Feeling great. Yeah, let's, let's really excited. Fair. Let's be fair, you just walked straight out of a call, put your microphone on, sat down. Yep. So I'm going to give you a minute just to... Uh, uh, to open my beer? Uh, sure, you can open your beer, that'll work. Uh, you know what, I'll join you as well. If, if No man should drink alone. Cheers, uh, man. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> um, and to be fair, we've got a, a pretty action-packed schedule today. We've got uh, um, two and a half, let's call it three announcements to make. And uh, of course, you know me well enough, we're saving the very best for last, so uh, please don't uh, uh, check out unless you have to. Uh, the good news is this will be, of course, on YouTube to watch back afterwards. Um, the office is buzzing, man. It's yeah, you think so? Yeah, it's a good feeling here. Yeah, it's like, like, it's, like uh, it's one month before the hackathon, Yeah. but then we're five months before... Four, 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 four and a half. Four. Uh, be, before, uh, yeah, the, before go the event that will take exactly. place in November. <laughs> let's let's hold that thought for a moment. Um, of course, we're always open for your input. So uh, we have uh, set up Slido. Uh, if you were with us at the last touching base session, you know how that works. Um, it's a simple way that you can uh, uh, send questions to me and Rukhe. And the uh, Slido you can find at uh, sly.do and the Login that you need to use is hashtag odyssey. Don't forget the hashtag. Without the hashtag, it will not work. So slido.com, hashtag odyssey. And there's a couple of things you can do there. You can obviously ask your question at any time through this session. Um, but you can also look through the questions from other people in the, uh, in the community, in the ecosystem. And if you see a question, you think, yeah, I have the same question, give it an upvote. Um, because when we get to the Q&A sessions, uh, Ruch and I will uh, have a look through, and, and if we see something that is obviously very popular, we will try our best to address that. For those of you watching via YouTube, there is, of course, the chat function in YouTube. Um, feel free to chat away there with your, your fellow ecosystem members. Uh, Maria and Stefan, just like last time, are also in there. So they'll, they'll handle any questions that aren't directly sent to us. If you want to talk to Ruch or I, then use the Slido. Wow, man. What's We're up? here. Yeah. How's life? It's great. Uh, I have to say so. I mean, uh, of course, we can be happy that uh, uh, um, the, the corona crisis is, is, is uh, somewhat, uh, it seems like it's, it's kind of under control. However, still a lot of uncertainties. We, we bit uh, the bullet of going fully online. Uh, we took the jump uh, a couple let's, of weeks ago. Let's, let's slow down just a and little. That's where lots of energy comes I know, from. I know, I know. You want to get there, you want to get there. Yeah. But we're not there yet. True. Um, I forgot to, uh, to mention, of course, those of you who logged in a little bit earlier had some fantastic music playing. Uh, we do have uh, Jeremy, our, uh, our componist and uh, musician in the building. I think we got a view. Yeah, I can see we got a view with you as well. Um, let the folks know that you really were playing. Yep, so no expenses spared here. <laughs> um, yeah, and hammer eat all your heart the, out. Huh? No. <laughs> all, all the music that you're hearing uh, throughout this session uh, uh, is being uh, played live. Thanks, and uh, thanks for joining us. Of course, there's uh, a few tech people around. Um, thank you, folks, keeping me on track. Just before we get into the exciting stuff, I think. There's a, a, a step we've got to go back, and that's yeah. the phase before. That seems so fair. between last touching base and this touching base, um, stuff happened, right? You, yep. uh, as Odyssey, uh, had to pull together some new programming items. How do we bridge that gap? How do we bridge it in uncertainty? And you asked me to show the folks at home a slide called the challenge interface. 
Uh-huh. Uh, the folks at home are going to see one of these. Uh, it's for uh, one of the challenges. Of course, there's 21 different challenges, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of this. And, and there's a lot of information on this slide. So folks at home, don't worry about reading it in depth. This information is all available. Uh, and if it isn't, it will be soon, I promise. What does this challenge interface mean for you and, and the information in it? What's been happening in the last 10 weeks? Yeah. Um, so the last uh, couple of weeks uh, is all about diving into the problem more and uh, staying away from uh, building solutions, right? So if you really want to understand each other, uh, then for the challenge uh, leads and their uh, stakeholders, it's extremely <coughs> important to learn. <coughs> have a good one. Uh, extremely important to, to learn what kind of problem uh, does each team want to focus on. And so not the big challenge, but what's the problem exactly. within that challenge? The specific problem you want to solve. And what have they been doing the last 10 weeks? And, and uh, it's basically uncovering that, and at the same time, the challenge leads, and sometimes they're also they're, they're cha- uh, the, the stakeholders, saying, okay, if you want to solve that problem, then I see uh, the most potential in that direction or in that direction. So it's, it's, it's taking the challenge, defining a problem you want to solve, and then having the, the, the stakeholders saying, okay, we see a lot of potential uh, if you go that direction. Yeah, and, so it's still and information gathering, yes, and, but and also finding the way, but without getting into solutions. Yeah, and, and it's also that with this information, we enable anyone to interface with the ecosystem of a challenge. That would be the challenge partners, their stakeholders, users, the and the teams. Yeah. So, I mean, if I look at this challenge interface, and again, without reading into the depth of the detail, but it seems to me that with this amount of detail that we've, we've never had before, before getting to the event, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to me that the team should be much more knowledgeable about, okay, what is it we're actually solving? Not, not the big abstract vision, but what's, what's the step we need to take that if we can crack that nut, yeah. we can make big steps. It strikes me that the challenge lead should know much better about why that thing is the thing that needs to get solved first or next. Yeah, and, and it's also uh, good to know what you want to prepare. So data sets, uh, right. uh, experts you want to bring from the field and that kind of stuff because with the right domain knowledge uh, and the right knowledge about the context, that's where you can make sensible prototypes, right? Right, and that's logical because of course we have teams coming in who perhaps don't understand the the real depth of the domain, mm-hmm. but we have domain holders who don't necessarily understand the, the new ways of solving things, the new technologies, the exactly. new, so it's really about connecting those yeah. together. And, yeah. and that feels to me like a very human thing rather than a technical thing. Yeah, of course. yeah because uh, uh, it's only when humans together want to solve something at the collective level, yeah. it's when, when real change happens, right? So, I mean, that sounds pretty exciting. That, that brings us kind of up to date to today. Mm-hmm. So now we can start uh, uh, talking about what comes next. But before we talk about what comes next, we got, <laughs> we got, we got, we got a little bit of business to do. Um, Let's get it over with. It's the first announcement. Uh, and hopefully you've all seen uh, the latest Odyssey newsletter. And if you didn't, I know that all the challenge leads have been called. And I am uh, reliably informed that all the teams have also been contacted. Mm. But just in case anybody's not sure, um, at the beginning of Corona, you had to postpone the hackathon not once but twice. And we still live in some uncertainty now. You know, can we bring 2,000 people from all over the world to Groningen in November? You know, this, the answer is we don't know, therefore it's no. We, we can't live with that uncertainty forever, right? Well, at, at this moment, we have to understand that the answer is no. Yeah. Right? So from a government perspective, uh, the stance on that has is, changed. Is no. It's and maybe no. not till next year. So, so <laughs> that's not a we can't starting keep, point no. for planning such an event, no. right? So you can't keep postponing indefinitely. The work is too important. The world needs to continue in a new... We have to get form. this done this year, yeah. So it strikes me that that hackathon has served really well for the past three seasons. Yeah. And now, partly because of corona, it has to retire. Yes. What, what, what's your thought on that? Why? When you discover what you're actually going to create... So uh, then you discover that you have to close the book instead of just adding another chapter, right? This is about closing a book, and uh, but it's mid-season, right? Yeah. So uh, halfway through, change the ending, cliffhanger. Yeah. Yeah. And and to be fair, you know I've been around the office a lot over the last couple of months. You were quite reluctant as a team. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, we'll we'll get back to why in a moment, but um, yeah. 
you know, I, I think everybody at, uh, watching now, hi folks, uh, understands we are going online. Um, and we've got a lot of technically capable, smart, and, and uh, um, savvy people that have been to hackathons. They've been to online hackathons. They've seen online hackathons, especially in the last couple of months where lots of organizations are having to go online. Um, is that what you have in mind? That, that kind of, uh, let's do a Zoom call and... Uh... and let's have this massive energy drain. No, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously uh, I know the answer to this no. question, but yeah, hell, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, but so. that, that, that is uh, nowhere near, I would say. Okay. No. So we got to close this book. We'll go to the, the next book. I just want to give the folks uh, watching a moment to just reflect back um, on on what closing this book means for them. Um, you know, we we've been done and moved on for quite some time. Well, yeah. Um, but it remains dear to our heart. Yes. So, folks at home, close your eyes if you're comfortable. Listen with me for a moment and just. Let whatever feelings come to you come and hopefully go. I find myself looking back at the confused faces of awe, people walking into the sugar factory, wondering if it was real. Stepping through the portal to a headspace of infinite possibility, beyond our comfort zones, we found each other. Working in harmony, creating in flow, all building up to an epic end show. But it never stopped there. It was just another beginning to go where others don't dare, for we were building momentum. Some of you experienced it once, twice, or even three times over. Some of you were waiting to experience your first odyssey through the portal, building your own momentum to go where others don't dare. The hackathon will not come back, so now we must let it go and create space for what must come next, to continue building the momentum, ready to bring along the others will dare. And this is where I had, wish I had a book and I could close it. Didn't have the right props. Deep True breath. master of ceremonies, sir, Nick. Whew. Let it go. It's gone. Bottom Closed. Up. And so, before we move on to the next book, why are we talking about books and not chapters? Everybody says one chapter closes, another opens. Yeah, this is... Um, so the the physical space uh, was our playing ground, so to say. That's now closed. And to be able to fully embrace the playing ground of what the internet has to offer, we discovered that while going through that rabbit hole of what do we have to leave behind and uh, what is there to explore, uh, we quickly found, whoa, this is, this is another book. This is, there is, this is so much in there. Yeah. Um, this opens up so many new possibilities, uh, so many different scenarios yeah. that... So it feels is, like a, a whole new book. It's not even a sequel. It goes beyond that. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's get into announcement number one. Yeah getting this thing uh, uh, launched, if that's the right word. Um, but before we do that, <laughs> there's a very relevant piece. I think we need to rewind, actually, to the last Touching Base session because one of the team found a video clip. Mm -hmm. Well, Roger, let's just roll the video clip and we'll let the folks at home see. Is it time to start thinking about a virtual hackathon? I would say it's uh, our scenario D. Um, so I'm, D I'm, for I'm, don't do it? Uh, D or for do it. And I'm, I'm going to be very open and frank here. Uh, people love going to the Odyssey hackathon because of uh, uh, the experience we, we are building. And you cannot get that online. Well, the question is not, we cannot do it. What? How could potentially, probably, a virtual hackathon brings such an experience that you think it is even better yeah. than getting together in one venue. So. so, from scenario D, don't do it, to plan A, 
Do it. Do it. How does it feel if you look back at that? <laughs> well, it feels a, 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 as a world of difference, of course. <laughs> uh, but it's also because I've seen the company transform already over the past couple of weeks. Uh, and I've seen uh, uh, what we are actually working on. So, so for us, uh, it's, it's already part of the new normal. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, <laughs> I, I just love that look on your face when we, the, the, the question gets asked from, from one of the folks at home. And you're kind of like, no, but what if? Yes. And then, I don't know, presciently, perhaps ahead of time, started setting the seeds for yeah. what is to become. But I'm, I'm really curious. Um, you know, we, we still do live in this uncertainty at the moment. Even, even we know that it's not going to be the hackathon. That's, that's gone. Um, but you've got to create something new from scratch. And I was with you guys the very first hackathon when it was kind of like, how do we do a hackathon at this scale? Mm -hmm. um, to me, it feels very much like that. So how do you and the team go about creating something brand new uh, online, so very different to what you know, um, and and create excitement for this at the same time. Well, is it is it just about good event design or? No, it's, it, it goes a lot further. And one of the one of the very important things uh, I think we did is uh, we started listening, uh, listening to our partners and uh, some of the let's say veteran teams and some of the people that know us from the beginning to how do they experience uh, a successful Odyssey event? Um, and uh, what are they hoping for? And um, at the same time, we, uh, we always have this kind of interaction core, uh, which enables any, everyone at the event to be productive, be effective in whatever they want to achieve. And that iterates each year. Well, now we're taking a massive leap in that. Uh, and there's a lot more pieces of the puzzle coming together um, in, in, in what you actually can achieve during such a, such a culmination of, of energy, of people, of preparations uh, in, 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 in such a great momentum. And then there is, uh, and then there's of course, the, um, the experience layer, so to say, where you build a, a different world uh, that enables us to, to go to a different place uh, and, and, and get in a, uh, on, on the same level in, in a playing field where uh, this board member from the multi-billion dollar company is as important as that brilliant uh, designer or artist or, or developer that, that thinks of this brilliant yeah. idea to solve something. And so, as I mentioned, I've been around the Odyssey office a, a while um, over the, the last few months. Um, I've seen changes here. I mean, changes in not only philosophy, not only what is the event if it isn't what it was, um, but also with some of the people that are coming and going and, and getting involved. So yeah. it, I'm getting the feeling that this isn't just designing a new event. No, no, no like this, is, this, is some, this is a complete new concept uh, uh, all the way through the core uh, of it. Uh, and, and, and that core is the spirit of the event a.k.a. the spirit of the company, uh, the ecosystem uh, that gets uh, into a completely new gear. Uh, and with that, we found a new gearbox, so to say. So it's, it's like, uh, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's an incredible amount of, of creativity that, that comes with, uh, with it. And uh, to just to give you an example, uh, we hired our first Unity developer <laughs> uh, uh, a sh short while back, you know, so, yeah. so yeah, the, it's definitely different. Uh. And one of the things that we were talking about last week was you saying, now that, now that you and the company or the organization have made that, and the ecosystem of those who have had input, they, they might not realize it yet, but have made that mental switch, it seems like there's all sorts yes. of new possibilities well, that we'd never dreamed of. Yeah, this I also have to mention, I mean, the amount of support we are getting from everyone, uh, from the teams, from the partners, from stakeholders, from uh, advisors, uh, is, is incredible. Um, it feels like it's gathering. Yes, and, and, but it also feels like uh, an enormous amount of support and people cheering along the sidelines in, okay, uh, Nobody's ever been doing what you guys are doing right now. Uh, we have a special opportunity uh, because we have to do it in the middle of the season. They're excited for it. And, and yes, and, and, but of course they also are like, well, how are you going to do this? You know, uh, it's not that you say, oh yeah, sure, it's, it's gonna happen. No, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot to it. Yeah. And it's November already, right? So, so when it is, when the event is. So 
That is no, uh, we four, 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 four and a half months. Yeah, we're a couple of months behind schedule, but that's how actually we kind of like it because it's building the airplane while flying. And if we didn't do that, how would we expect the teams and the challenge owners and, and, and to do the same? Yeah. So I, <laughs> despite seeing the stress it causes, I appreciate the eating your own dog food. Um, you mentioned a few words in there that, that possibly nobody else picked up on, but I think it's time that we get to the reveal moment. Um, in true Odyssey style, we're going to do that, not, uh, not with you and me counting down to three, two, one and, and saying the name, but we've got a, uh, a short clip for you folks at home as we uh, reveal everything that has been gathering momentum from, well, years ago. <laughs> Come on, Nick. <laughs> you cannot keep this up. So there we go, Odyssey we go. Momentum. Yes. If we didn't drop the clue enough times beforehand, it should be obvious now. Um, what does the word momentum mean for you? Oh, it's, it's the culmination of all that energy, uh, of all, what, what I said before, of all that preparing. Um, it, it also can only be achieved together in, in, uh, in that regard, right? Uh, so it's the result of the mobilization effort of each and every one of us. And it, it doesn't uh, just, uh, it's not only in the preparation, but also during momentum that the mobilization reaches, right? It's, it's, it's pinnacle. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and therefore I think we can become much more of what we really are yeah. uh, and, and uh, reach for that, that all the potential that is in there. So for me, I really like how it reflects all the work that's been happening for, you know, for some of these folks. The momentum started maybe at Hackathon 1 or, or maybe even before then for them in sure. their personal journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we know it doesn't stop at the end of the weekend. It keeps going because we've done that enough times. Yeah. But it also references a point in time, a moment. And um, that leads me on to if we talk about closing one book and opening another book, it's, it's normal that there's some continuity between the two. It's, it's rare that you open the second book in a series and it's completely different characters, completely different story, then it's two separate books. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the, what are the things, um, maybe it's not just characters, but maybe it's more than that, so let's call them ingredients, that, that have to come from the first book to make the second one successful? Yeah, so um, of course it's uh, the challenges. Uh, and they are um, uh, wherever it's it's needed adapted to let's say the the uh, the reality we live in today. Yep. Um, and uh, then there's all the teams that have been curated. 105. 105. Uh, and carefully curated as well. We spend a lot of time uh, with that, and and it's all the preparations they did together already. Uh, we also had the, the fresh eyes sessions with everyone where, uh, where lots of inspiration was shared. And so I think these are, these are the key ingredients because that's uh, the people who want to achieve results, right? Um, uh, the challenge partners, their stakeholders. Um, so that's, that's important. And then we have tools that worked really well, like uh, the hackathon canvas we, we had, yeah. which was a physical thing. Now in the digital space, 
you can do a lot of fun stuff with that. And yeah. the same goes for, um, let's say, uh, game mechanics, uh, incentive mechanics that are out there. I, fr uh, I remember in the first uh, hackathon when in 2017 we had grown-up men from around 50 years old seriously asking for how do I get more balloons. Yeah. Uh, uh, and stickers and stuff like that. Yep. Um, I think also the um, what we've learned is that uh, each challenge um, is is a context of its own, and this is an inspiring context. For example, if you take um, conflict prevention, right? Conflict prevention is of course the name of the challenge, but the real challenge is to connect or build a bridge between the early warning systems and the early action systems. So why do we have all these early warning systems and do not take early action? Well, <laughs> some recognition, Corona. yeah, okay, some recognition there. Um, and, and, and there are quite a lot of events these days where you would say, okay, these, these early warning systems in, in terms of potential conflicts, well, they should be going red blinking, right? So yep. where's the early action? Well, so. So to, to take people in that context, in a digital space, we have a lot of options there as well. Yeah. I mean, there's, so yeah. And there was, there was something you said to me about, um, I, you said it in the context of the challenge leads and partners, but I think it also uh, applies to the teams. And that is that it, it, despite the careful curation, because of course, you know, there is a physical capacity or there has been a physical capacity, uh, the willingness to work with other new people, yeah. people that are not there yet and will come along. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned one uh, of the really important ingredients, which was the, the so-called Odyssey success factor. And, yeah. and for clarity, that's not how are we successful, that's how are you successful. Yeah, so, so when is a, a team or... Uh, I mean, each challenge in Odyssey is an invitation to create a new system, yep. right? It's a systemic change. So we have said, okay, we, it needs a simple equation. Uh, that how you can how you can think about success. So that's um, uh, the success of, of your solution is let's say the impact of the problem uh, times um, the number of people you can involve in contributing uh, times the uh, number of people that can actually benefit from your solution. So usually we say okay we create this and then people can benefit from it. But then the question is. In this case, is your solution able to allow others to contribute so that everyone can benefit? So more people benefiting from the outcome by allowing more people to contribute to that outcome. Yeah. And with clarity over what it is we need to do. Yes, and, and, and with that, the level of interactivity uh, is, well, you know the internet, right? It's, you can it's do easy. anything, you can yeah. do anything. It's, it's, it's not per se easy, I would say, but you can do anything. So what we will do, for example, is enable any type of user, right? It could be a farmer, it could be a, 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 fisher, a fisherman or somebody that drives a, 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 a bus or flies an airplane or works for customs or what have you, uh, installs solar panels or just a consumer they can become part of momentum. They can actually join momentum. And uh, if they take the right steps, they can show their support of a team where they say, okay, I've seen your solution. I know what you, we have, con we have this uh, interaction. We had contact, we had a conversation maybe, or I answered one of your questions and what you are building, I would like to be part of that. Click. Sign me up as a tester. Uh, exactly. I, maybe I commit to, being a part of it, buying it, if that is uh, uh, installing it. What? So, so, so they, they can say to, 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 to their, uh, anyone can say to their clients, Yo, come on, have a look at this cutting edge innovation we are yeah. currently prototyping. What do you think about it? What are your questions? What is your input? Do you have a, a, a story you can share in this context? Yeah. Um, so in, in, in that regard, if we, if we look at, um, the, the things at Momentum that are being created as vehicles of change, right? You have your prototype uh, as a ship, uh, so to say, then you have your crew. So who's building the ship, and who's flying building, the ship. Building, but also who is on board of this solution, yeah. right? The stakeholders, if, if, I mean, if the, if, the, if the challenge partner is not on board, you have a problem, but then the stakeholders uh, and the users, maybe investors, 
Um, yeah. So, and then of course, the, the question is, can you also collect some fuel, aka funding, or uh, interest in funding a potential yeah. multi-stakeholder project after momentum? Yeah, so essentially, you just described a whole new class of, and I'm gonna call them spectators, not, not participants yet. They could start out as spectators. Because of course, we, we couldn't get people into the building. Who would you bring from where in the world? What is the cost? What yeah. is the value Complete of that? Chaos. And we don't have the space. Yeah. But online, we have enough space. Yeah, and nobody yeah. needs to get on a plane and fly. Exactly. So this has unlocked a whole new level for, and, and not for you or me, but for these folks building our challenge leads, yeah. you know, lead, leading to come together and go that next step already. Exactly. Within momentum. And, and uh, in the physical space, the interaction is not very clear. So when I walk to a table of a team, they don't know what I want, who I am, in what role, in what capacity, etc. But online, you can design these flows yep. and you can address them in the most effective way. And that's, that's basically the rabbit hole we're, we're yep. in, part of that. And so I've got a question that we, we didn't actually prep for, but um, in the old world, we had a weekend. Mm -hmm. And there was a beginning of that, and there was an ending of that. And of yeah. course, there was a coming and a going. If we're going online, why have we picked a weekend again? Why, why, why isn't it just open and infinite? Yeah, we, we still um, want to have that momentum, right? So it's... And by that, you mean the moment. Um. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so no, it's... it's um, you just agree on a moment in time where you will be, uh, where you are willing to help everyone in that space, or anyone. I and that say. helps to drive and focus. Yes. Creativity. It's, a, it's your mobilization effort that uh, says, okay, then and there, we're gonna meet and do this thing. And it's gonna be epic. Uh, that's... Is that, is that our middle name? Yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's your middle name or your first middle and last name, but um, so, you know, we're, we're talking about a lot of stuff. We're not giving too much away, um, and that, that might seem... Um, no, we just can't. I that mean, might be mischievous from us, but, but we actually don't have all of these answers yet. It's still being designed. We're still ha, figuring out what's going to work and what isn't going to work, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's got to be built, so this is not going to be an online uh, a video call. Um, Aren't you nervous about this? I mean, four months to go, right? Four and a half to the event. Yeah. Uh, if you're working on it in the days before the event, then you're going to be sweating bullets, I know that. So call it four months to go. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like an awfully long time to build something of this scale. No shit. <laughs> no, it freaks me out. But at the same time, I, I'm, I'm super excited uh, because uh, the people who are on board uh, of this journey so far, and I know that during summer we will gain uh, a lot more uh, in, in our crew, uh, production-wise. Yeah, basically for us, summer is cancelled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and but that's 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 quite okay because I, I'm actually looking forward in building all that stuff, and um, yeah, I think um, of course it's it's you can only do so much in four months, but it keeps focus on what is really the most important stuff, yep. um, you want to have that right, and then see what else you can do. Yep. Um, and the good news about working over summer is uh, we're going to be sending out information as we get it, right? We're not going to wait until the very end to, to, oh, well. to launch some of this. So um, there's going to be things like challenge lead dives coming up. There's going to be uh, a getting ready, not, not event this time, but a phase, yep. because getting ready was always uh, here in the Netherlands. Um, there's going to be a touching base three. Uh, that's essentially going to be the kickoff of the post-summer season. Yep. So by that time, there should be more clarity flowing through. So make sure you're signed up to the uh, Odyssey newsletter to uh, keep that information coming. Obviously, for the teams, and we, you know, we'll try to be as much in contact as we can. Um, but knowing that maybe you have vacations whilst these guys are sweating. Uh, I hope so for, for everyone. Yeah. It's basically, what, whatever we can give you to prepare better yes. and to have better results during Momentum, that's what we will give you. What the experience will be like? Mm -hmm. that, that stays with us. That stays with us. Just like the first time going into and the big the building, second, and the second time at the sugar exactly. factory. Uh, I think we should hear from some of our uh, um, participating viewers. Uh, we're gonna turn it over to <laughs> Slido. Um, so if you have asked a question, I'll take a look at those in a minute. If you haven't, this would be a good time to ask your questions. 
Uh, upvote any that you see, and for a moment or so, Jeremy is going to entertain your ears. Right, I can see and Ruch can see here some of the questions that are coming in. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to take the very top one because it has been upvoted the most times. Um, why is this interview only talking in a very meta manner? I mean, I think we, we might have just answered that, but for the, for the, for the, for the clarity, we mm -hmm. can't talk details yet, right? Um, no, I, I mean, we've explained exist. some de details, I think, or, already. Um, and uh, for the rest, uh, this, is, this is as far as we can take anyone uh, down the rabbit hole uh, at this point. I mean, we wouldn't want to make promises that we can't keep, either because of time, exactly. cost, or, or just impracticality of, of we try something and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But if we set a bad expectation, it's hard to come back from that, right? Yeah. Um, what can we do online, which we could not do at the offline event? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, uh, first there's data, where you can play, you get so much more data from any interaction, uh, from all the achievements, from all the commitments, from all the support, um, from all the, uh, well, let's say, uh, 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 transactions of, of, of value and appreciation and all that kind of stuff, uh, which you can translate into the experience. Yep. Um, I think one of the things that I've seen, and I, I think we're okay to talk about this is, what I noticed at the previous physical events mm -hmm. was that team interaction within a challenge was, was okay. Mm -hmm. Team interaction beyond a challenge was a little bit more difficult. It required a lot of effort to basically stop what you're doing, yep. go over where, mm. 100 teams, and try to figure out, and I think that is it's gonna be much more streamlined. Yeah, it's baked into the experience. And that, So for, for example, me, uh, just to give you an example, uh, in the canvas, there will be a box <laughs> where it says, okay, how are you handling identity in your solution? Well, it could, it, you, maybe you, you say, okay, for this solution, I disregard identity. Not sure why you would do it, but it could be. But if you're doing it, well, then there are 10 teams working in, on identity in the identity track that are offering their identity solutions to all the other teams yeah. because they want to find out how self sovereign identity works during momentum in other tracks. So, not, so o not only propagating the discovery of these things, but also providing a sort of quid pro quo, if you need identity and I'm building it, I really should talk to you just to find out what your needs are. Exactly. Because maybe I'm building completely the wrong thing, or maybe it's just not suitable for you, but it is suitable over here. Yeah, so if you're building an inventory as an identity track team, then you definitely want to talk to other teams and see, okay, uh, who can use my whatever uh, uh, authorization uh, solution uh, uh, um, where, where I extend my power of authority, for example. Yep. Um, uh, uh, can they use it in the, in the uh, Internet of Logistics track or in the healthcare track or what have you? Yep. And, and uh, yeah, of course, you have found out before Momentum already and at Momentum, when everyone is building, then you want to Start using, testing, exactly. Playing. Yeah. A um, couple more questions. Did you have any companies, uh, and, and I don't know whether that means teams or, or maybe uh, challenge leads, so both, uh, cancel because they don't want to participate on an online only event? Um, well, companies, no. Um, uh, I think um, 
uh, there was a team, uh, like one team, who said, uh, uh, okay, we don't believe in the power of an online event, and maybe that's due to uh, their previous experience with other events, uh, I don't know. Um, and I remember in the first year, uh, when, we, uh, when we did the first ever, uh, let's say, predecessor of, of the Odyssey uh, yeah. hackathon, it took a little bit of a leap of faith. Yep. Um, and and we're in the same situation again, right? I, 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 I'm very open about this. It takes it takes a little bit of a leap of faith. So far, the support has been really really good uh, from from the partners, all the teams. Everybody is really enthusiastic and intrinsically motivated. And I think that's also a part of where all the energy comes from: is this intrinsic motivation to work on a challenge, to collaborate and to really find new ways to yep. get new new type of solutions. Yep, two uh, last questions. One, uh, this one that just abused me. Can I invite my mom now that the event will be online? Definitely. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll answer this one. Uh, why wouldn't you use an existing online event platform instead of creating your own? And folks at home, trust me, I'm seeing behind the scenes, it doesn't exist. And if it did, we'd be using it. Is that reasonable for me to say? Fair enough. All right, we're going to um, drop out of these Q&As. We will save up the uh, questions. Uh, if there's anything in there that appears to be burning, then uh, obviously we'll let the, you and the community know. Um, and it's all good info for us to make sure our communications over the summer are good. Um, OK, that's closing the book, opening the next book, Q&A over momentum. I think it's time to go to the last section. Yeah. Can we get a, just a little bit of music to let that sync and process and let me change gears? Because yeah. the next thing is, I think, the one that people are not expecting. Fair to say? Could, could be. Could very well be. This next bit is, is really about going forwards after momentum. Yes. So we're talking about momentum in November, and we're talking about a, a whole way of gathering, let's call it, that, that has to be built from the ground up. It simply doesn't exist. But now we're switching to, and what happens after that momentum? Um, and funny enough, I was reviewing some of our past videos, and at Odyssey Polaris, which was November last year, November 2019, Arwen Smith from Moby said some things uh, on stage in a panel discussion. We've got the video clip. Um, it's, it's a little bit long and wordy, but what she said was, was and I don't know whether she knew it at the time. She's, she's clearly very smart, and she's very close to the problem. Mm -hmm. But what she said for me was really insightful for what uh, comes next. So, Roger, I'm going to ask you, can we uh, run that rewind to November last year? <laughs> Our biggest focus but and our biggest challenge Lord knows is collaboration yeah. because these are these are huge companies and because you are huge companies yeah. there is a lot at stake to default from the status quo and for the different types of collaboration that you want to facilitate may it be on governmental level startup level or company level different uh, collaboration infrastructure would need to exist. So literally, there would need to be a place where they can go and then have that conversation. And furthermore, that place where they're then going needs to be technology agnostic. So there cannot be a specific preferential treatment, as you rightly mentioned. And at the same time, it needs to be, just like Odyssey, a very energetic place where the change makers are inspired to bring their colleagues who are maybe not that far along. And then if you have those three ingredients, what you can get to is almost, um, in, our, in our specific case, uh, a feasibility drawing board. And you can say, OK, if you agree with these technical feasibility criteria, you agree with these commercial commitment criteria, then we can actually get going and start building. Hell yeah, right? Start building. And, and I want to bring two, two trains of thought together here based on, on what Arwen was saying. One is you just mentioned the 
the concept of using momentum to build your ship, mm -hmm. getting ready to launch, right? And, and your ship could be your prototype, your pilot, your, your whatever. But, but after launching, there's, you know, you've got to keep going. Yep. And I know, because I've been around the office for, what is it, uh, four years now, mm -hmm. um, the, even before Owen talked about this, we and, and you, you folks here have been talking quite a lot about exactly the same thing, infrastructure. And it, it was my feeling uh, from conversations you had that, that either ecosystems, and, and for the folks at home who don't know, I'm also an ecosystem builder outside of the Odyssey realm. So I've, I've suffered this pain. Either you've got a crap ton of different tools that really badly interface or don't interface at all. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and for me, that means you know, uh, um, in one ecosystem, I'm having to use discourse and this and this and this. And another ecosystem, I'm on Slack and using this and this and this. And somebody's using Google and somebody's using Excel. And, and, you know, and that just keeps going on forever. Or there is custom-made ecosystem tools that tend to be kind of like proprietary software as a service that kind of do everything, but nothing very well. No, and they, and they keep you within this walled garden as well, right? So um, um, typically uh, uh, all the software that is out there is sold to an organization instead of a group of organizations that is, uh, um, right, uh, at some point could be five organizations, at some point could be 50, yep. could be 5,000 organizations, but that collective would be the client that would use products and services. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had examples where I'm working with one company within an in, in a ecosystem or a coalition that's, that's uh, on the Google side of things, mm -hmm. and then another company who's working on the Microsoft side of things, and they're not allowed to use each other's stuff because rules, regulations, bureaucracies, internal yeah, stuff. And you don't have anything from yourself, right? So the collective doesn't own that piece of software. All the data in it, or they might own the data, but it's locked up, exactly as you said. So um, let's get right into telling the folks what it is. Uh, what's it called? It's called Cherry Twist. Cherry Twist. Yeah. Um, and it's all about how to go forward after Momentum. Um, yeah. I'm just going to throw out, it's a, it's a digital first collaboration tool. Yeah. So it's a, a piece of digital infrastructure. Uh, one interconnected system. It's a stack for, for Great word. multi stakeholder collaboration. Right. So, so it, it, it will allow anyone to initiate, uh, fund, and govern uh, projects in a neutral place. So, so uh, let's say we want to do a, uh, a project. Uh, so this is at the end of Momentum. Yeah. You've got a group of folks working on a challenge on, or underneath a challenge with yeah. challenge leads. You've got teams. You may have other external stakeholders. Uh, let's We've say you have 10 stakeholders, including your, your challenge yep. uh, lead. And then uh, instead of anyone would say, okay, join my platform, my install, or whatever, my licensed thing, yep. you would have a neutral place. Let's say this, this table is a neutral place, right? And, and you can just join the neutral place where everyone gets together, collaborate on whatever needs to be achieved at the collective yep. uh, level, right? So, so it allows you also to, to create and maintain this collective uh, um, uh, ownership, uh, uh, um, this, the, these curation. collective task management, curation, but also voting mechanisms, et cetera. Finance? But finance as well. Uh, yes, if, uh, if funding is a, very, it's a, it's a very important part of this. And the, the, the fun part is, in the crypto space, this is all normal, right? For, for a couple of well, years, yeah, you could say so. So, so these kind of DAOs, they're actually decentralized autonomous organizations, they have been trying to figure this thing out and it's, it's I wouldn't say it's easy, but outside of the banking infrastructure, program anything with money is easy. Within the bank, banking infrastructure, it's, it's not so easy. Uh, and we've been spending the past three years in figuring out how that would work because we see it as a keystone for what Odyssey has to offer to all the teams and their partners. Yeah. Because the real success is not what's happening <laughs> at, at Momentum. It's getting it launched to the real world. Exactly. It's, it's making that impact, it's, solving that challenge and going further. It's this, for example, the Space for Good team that is now doing a three-year project with Liddy Smiths on Borneo in a reforestation project of 170,000 hectares. Yeah. That is success. That is impact. And how do we bridge the gap between the end of momentum and, doing and that. getting that yes. up and running and stable and easy and getting all of that, that 
sticky well, stuff out of the way to exactly. let folks focus on solving the problem. Yes. Um, and to be really clear, because uh, because you hinted at it, but this is not an Odyssey product, right? No, no, that, and that's why it's a, it has a different name and everything. So so um, it's it's Odyssey initiating this. So yep. let's say we are a, a founding partner of this, uh, because our North Star metric um, is the the amount of successful projects that happen after the hackathon or now momentum, and because that's where impact happens. Um, so we decided that such a system should not belong to, to Odyssey because a lot more people may want to use it. Um, and there's a ton of knowledge out there uh, that has also been uh, uh, uncovered basically over the past three, four, five years, uh, including all the way up to Eleanor Ostrom's work about the commons. Yep. Right? And, and so you want to have this as a, as a pure open source project where the software would be free, right? So it's governed by the Cherry Twist Foundation, which is a non-profit Dutch foundation where, uh, and we're in the process of selecting the right license, but it, it's basically the, the, the uh, most copyleft license we, we will be able to find uh, uh, that we can work with, uh, that, that is workable. Um, and and uh, the, the vision is that anyone can fire up a Cherry Twist node and start building uh, their own uh, digital ecosystems and uh, hosting their projects, doing their own challenges and stuff like that without having to talk to, to Odyssey at all. So it's protected in a not-for-profit foundation. Yes. That Odyssey is a launching partner of, but is not the owner of. Yep. You said open source, so yep. it's going open source, and you said as copyleft as possible. Yep. Fire up your own nodes, so that can be either to use it, with never having to ha be in an Odyssey Open in, in, uh, Innovation uh, uh, Project. You, can, you can do a node as well, Nick. I, I, I probably will. Yeah. Um, for some of my other stuff, you know that already. Yeah. Um, and of course, because it's open source, the community can also contribute back to it. So if they need something as a function or as a feature, yeah. they can just go ahead, build it in, and it's there. And then other organizations can use that or not if they want. That's the fun part about it. And that also course. takes some of the load off of, uh, of the Cherry Twist Foundation of building everything. Because of course, building software, you get a billion feature requests. Which ones do you prioritize? This flips it around the other way and says, if you need it, build it. it Go for it. Just work. Yeah. Um, and, and therefore, the, the, the Cherry Twist Foundation, how is it funded? Well, through partners that want to see this happen. Yeah. And that understand that things happen doesn't don't happen for free. Sure. But you want the software to be free, just like you can fire up a WordPress instance just now and yeah. have your website, right? Thirty seven percent of the internet runs on WordPress. It's not I'm a not joke. I'm not sure if that's scary or epic. Probably both. both. Um and, and probably good for the folks at home to know that this this hasn't come out of nowhere. I mean, there's been four years of of hands-on research, right? This is coming back from, from your year. partners, your stakeholders, the teams, your own experience within the Odyssey organization of these things are, are uh, impossible today or they're really sticky or, or not so uh, useful. Mm -hmm. So all of that knowledge coming together to, to build this. Um, it makes sense to me, and I know, of course, you need somebody really strong to be able to build this. <laughs> Nice bridge there. So, I see what um, you did there. Yeah. You searched around and you found somebody to head up the technical side of this. Yes. I uh, believe we've got him on the line. Uh, I don't see him on my screen, so I'm just going to wait for the tech team to give me a nod and say he's on the line. When I introduce you, um, for some of you, he may feel familiar. He's been around the Odyssey ecosystem for a while. Um, yeah, we got to know each other really well in, during the Private Tracer initiative, uh, the, the contact tracing app, uh, also very open source, yep. non-profit, et cetera, uh, which we did, uh, which we were lucky enough to be, be part of. Uh, and then it all and, and got out of hand. Initiated, by the way, by uh, uh, Salim uh, Hadri. He was also uh, in, yep. in the Odyssey hackathon before. Okay, let's not tease him anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, I Neil. see him on my screen. I'm going to turn it around for Rukh as well. Uh, nice. Hi, Neil. It is Mr. Neil Smith. Yes. Hello. Oh, my God. What an intro. Thank you uh, for the introduction. No problem. No we, can, we can see you, and uh, I can hear you. It's not very loud, but uh, I'm getting a thumbs up that that'll become better in a moment. Neil, how are you doing today, sir? 
I'm doing very well, thank you. And uh, yeah, welcome to the deep end. Yeah, no, it's, um, I mean, it's clearly an exciting uh, journey. It's, uh, it's something that I uh, thought Erwin's words were, were really excellent. I hadn't made that connection. Uh, you know, we know we need to uh, collaborate more to face a lot of the challenges that we're, you know, that society is, is coming our way or already have. Uh, and the chance to, uh, to be involved in day one and try to create something, you know, really new and make a big impact is, uh, is just simply exciting. Yeah, and and so um, what what about it makes makes you excited? And, and maybe you can combine that with a bit of your background. Oh yeah, um, sure. Uh, so I've always been in uh, in the you know, at the border between deep tech and uh, you know how to use the deep tech to realize uh, results. I've had startups, I've had a scale up. Uh, it was you know, across multiple countries, etc. Um, busy for the last few years uh, since leaving the scale up to uh, build up the Yes Delft Digital Hub in The Hague. So focused on you know very talented young uh, and not so young uh, blockchain and AI startups and how to build up that whole ecosystem there. I've been very heavily involved with uh, Odyssey as well over the last few years um, and also with Private Tracer as Rutger was alluding to uh, earlier this year. Uh, and you know for me what drives me is the is the chance to try and help us solve a lot of the challenges that are coming our way and being able to bring together uh, the different aspects of my background from yesterday to the technical delivery uh, to try and hopefully help make that happen is just simply pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, for me, you're one of those people when Rucha named you, I was like, ah, yeah, that makes perfect sense. You're a bit of a unicorn. You know, I know a lot of fantastic uh, techies and developers who can build epic stuff. I know a lot of really great uh, community-led uh, focused uh, ecosystem builders. But having somebody who actually knows the depth of both sides, I, I you might be the first I've come across. Um, so, uh, uh, and, and for those who, who haven't necessarily uh, put it together yet, uh, you just mentioned you uh, you were at Yes Delft. You hosted us last year for the Getting Ready uh, yeah. event, and uh, you were also at the uh, at the last hackathon, and, and have been around a yeah. while. So, uh, having additional knowledge of what Odyssey is all about, um, I mean that is like yeah, the cherry on the top. It's 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 not just knowledge; it's also a, 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 an entrepreneurial force. Uh, so, as a CTO, to have Neil on board, uh, uh, or to have Neil on board as a CTO, is is. Uh, is really, uh, yeah, really, really awesome um, because setting up the, um, a software project is one thing. Setting up a software project uh, that has a, a global reach uh, as an open source project with community and all that, that stuff in there, that's something else. Yeah. Um, and um, and and yeah, that, that's uh, that's why we're lucky to uh, to work together. Uh, and and I like, also I like that in mirror form as well. That you mean there's so much insights and passion from within uh, the Odyssey team and the Odyssey community, and the chance to try and take a lot of those and to formalize them in a way that can be shared and made much more wider available. That that's that's just worthwhile. Um, you mentioned Yes Delft. Uh, let's let's just get something clear. Are you leaving Yes Delft? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, so all yes Thank Delft, goodness. I've always had sort of like a portion of time uh, uh, allocated to them, and then a portion of time for whatever I want to put energy into. Uh, so that uh, spare bandwidth uh, is now fully focused on uh, getting Cherry Twist up to the uh, to where I think it needs to go. Cool. And. Um, we talked about it. I think you were tuned in uh, on, a, on a sort of abstract level of, of what it needs to do. You're coming mm -hmm. in with a technical perspective. I, I don't know how deep we want to go on this call because I'm, I, you know, I, I don't know who's watching. But can you give us an, ex an example or yeah. an idea of the scope of the technical perspective here? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's, how should I put it? You're trying to look at what uh, Odyssey has been doing and other people have been doing in terms of enabling uh, collaboration in the physical world over the last uh, few years and how do you try to extract the essence on the different aspects of that collaboration and make them available in a digital realm. Um, so you have to think of uh, formalizing you know, the, what it, the challenge is, what the life cycle is, uh, what is the community, what are the roles in the community, um, the agreements within people in community, uh, you know, how you do the more formal agreements in terms of, say, for example, funding a particular outcome, a project people want to see, uh, how does self-sovereign identity fit into it? You know, it is also, uh, as Rucker alluded to, about trying to take a lot of what is possible 
uh, from the emerging technologies in Web3, be it self-sovereign identity or smart contracts or Web3 in general, you know, distributed storage. And how do you bridge that and make that understandable and available to the existing uh, legal and financial and corporate and governmental worlds? Uh, so you know, there's there's many dimensions to it and to do it all in a way that becomes, say, fairly seamless for someone to launch challenge, to actually build a community around that challenge, to actually agree on what the goals are in the community, to agree on some, say, steps or projects or milestones onto it, uh, how people to actually facilitate that collaboration in a safe and neutral way. Uh, yeah, the, it, it, it's, it, there's a lot of aspects to it. Uh, but with a lot we can extract away uh, from what we have seen and learned uh, over the last few years. Great. And and what's what's your perspective on open sourcing this? Uh, I think uh, this is the the differentiating factor. Uh, this is a you know if we you know the, the goal is to get the community around this uh, so that it can be by the community for the community. Um, it also should enable hopefully over time to allow us to much stronger integrate different communities different ecosystems you know so for example someone inside of uh, the estaft ecosystem can connect to someone inside of the odyssey ecosystem connect to somebody inside the nick stevens uh, ecosystem um so uh, the open source element means that becomes a neutral level playing field which means that a lot of the collaboration can simply start and, and happen one level up from where it happens now great and if i if I hear about all this complexity in there, I mean, obviously that that's just a fact of, of where you're starting from, right? I, I get that. Um, and, and going open source means you have to be very transparent about that kind of stuff. So I've got a lot of faith that, that that's a, a virtuous cycle of, okay, what are the, what are the key elements that are uh, essential? Just like building momentum, what are the key ingredients? Uh, what are the nice to haves and, and let the community also uh, um, give, give focus and direction and, and also take part in that. What, I mean, I mean, I can sit here and talk with Rucha all day, and he'll tell me that this is the biggest thing since sliced bread, and it's going to take over the world. <laughs> um, what's your perspective on 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 the scope of, of what's the potential of this? Uh, the potential it, it can be a game changer in terms of what it means to do collaboration between and within organisations. Um, you know, and, and then the challenge for us is how do we facilitate the energy that I think can and will come towards this project in an effective way. So that uh, you know, people that want to contribute can contribute, and uh, that people that want to extend can extend, uh, so that together we can create uh, as a one level up uh, level of um, multi collaborate multi stakeholder collaboration platforms. Uh, so you know, so we can solve those hard problems. Yeah, I think I think um, uh, a good way to think about this is that. On the internet, uh, we are familiar with uh, trying to leverage the bilateral relationship, right? I'm your friend, so we have a bilateral relationship. Thank so do, do, does it really matter if we are connected on LinkedIn to leverage the value we can create? Mm -hmm. Well, the, there is some value in that, of course, but the multilateral relationship mm -hmm. is something we are now beginning to grasp that we are part of all these multilateral connections, like these ecosystems. The complexity of life, basically. Exactly. Uh, and and, and you're, you have many multi multilateral relationships. And this is the value we want to unlock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and reputation clearly has a big part to play in this. Um, uh, and also that, uh, you know, the communications or the interactions that can take place in, uh, in an ad hoc physical space or in a particular context, can also happen in a seamless way within the community that builds up around a particular challenge. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that there is value in the human interaction, and we have to see how best to bring that into that uh, collaboration space. Yeah. And Neil, um, I was talking to Ruge a while ago about how, you know, we've got uh, a massive four and a half months until Momentum, <laughs> uh, which is is interesting on, on how we're going to build and develop that. But but I, yeah. I have faith there. The good news is you have so much longer to build Cherry Twist, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish. No, and, and, you know, to be clear with everybody listening, you know, this is at the start. Uh, we're in uh, all kinds of deep dive exploratory sessions with some you know, awesome uh, thinkers on these spaces. Uh, trying to work out well, what is the, the core uh, abstractions that we need to use, uh, what are the core stages we can use on, on terms of actually realizing value uh, so that it can uh, be there to facilitate what comes out uh, you know, from momentum and beyond. 
um, but to do it in a way that doesn't shortchange the long-term potential of, uh, of this kind of platform. So uh, it is early stages. Um, yeah, so you're in this, this capturing and gathering phase at the moment. You also have a deadline of about four and a half months. Maybe you get a week extra um, because, of course, we're, we're ambitious and aiming to have this ready or at least the first version yeah. for straight after Momentum, right? Well, and, and, and it's a part of where, uh, because Odyssey, uh, Cherry Twist is a stack, and the part of the stack that, that ought to be ready is uh, the, the part which allows you, in a very basic way, to uh, initiate, fund, and govern a multi-stakeholder project. So that ship created at Momentum exactly. can launch and keep it going can sail. Yeah. without necessarily needing to come back to Odyssey a year later. Exactly. Um, Neil, I know you've, uh, you've asked me to put out a call to action to the folks watching, uh, and you've, you've asked me to do that in two ways. Uh, and I think that can be best described as people who want to shape this. So that's more mm -hmm. in the capturing and the gathering and, and maybe even the giving phase. That could, yeah. be, that could be ideas or context or even, uh, um, you know, w w whatever is relevant now. And then there's the second call to action, which is in the building phase. And that's actually, you know, what have you got? What have you already worked on? What do you have that can plug into this? Uh, what are you passionate for? Where do you want to contribute to yeah. those pieces? Yeah. yeah, what what does Cherry Twist not need to build themselves because it already exists well enough, good enough, et cetera, et cetera. Just like we were saying about the multi-team uh, aspect during Momentum. Yeah. So there is a, a slide up for the folks at home um, that has uh, those two uh, calls to action, basically uh, shape the future. So uh, look at becoming a partner and uh, build the future, join the developer community, uh, there is a, a catch-all email address there, info at cherrytwist.org. Uh, I probably shouldn't give out Neil's um, uh, personal email, but uh, it's four letters long before the info. Um, and uh, you can go to the website, cherrytwist.org. It's a basic landing page at the moment, but my understanding is we have there a, a small form that enables people to just uh, register interest or say, hey, have you thought about this? And basically and, and, get in contact. And, and we're also, we have established a, uh, an open source repository as well on GitHub uh, with all the right uh, guidelines in there. So, you know, the, the framework we're putting in place to start channeling the energy. It's, it's already there to be viewed so people can yeah. see, okay, is this going the right way? Am I comfortable with it? Yeah. Great. And it's um, not just development, it's also legal and all kinds of other uh, uh, disciplines that are very, very welcome. Great. Thanks for adding that. Uh, Neil, we're going to move to some Q&A in a moment, so stick on the line. I'm sure there's been some questions about Momentum, uh, sorry, about Cherry Twist already. Um, but if you are uh, paying attention and listening, uh, take a moment to think about your questioning. Jeremy is going to entertain our ears in the meantime, and we'll get to some questions in a moment with Neil. <laughs> got a question about Cherry Twist, it would be super handy if you mentioned Cherry Twist in the question. We've just had a slight technical uh, um, issue on my end. I'm, uh, I've got the momentum questions mixed with the Cherry Twist. I'll give you an extra minute just to think about it.
All right, and we're back, and we've been uh, uh, scrolling through some of the questions. Great to see your uh, your positive feedback around uh, momentum and the exciting stuff. Um, Neil, I realize that you can't see the questions, so I'm going to make sure we read them out for you. Uh, I can see them. Oh, okay, great. Um, so I spotted that we have uh, Mr. Nicholas Robinson uh, yeah. apparently uh, dialed in and listening. Hi, Nick. Welcome, sir. Um, and he, he asked the question, what are Cherry Twist expectations about how to advance the challenge ideas that come out of momentum in November? Can I ask one of you two gentlemen to uh, address that? Sure. Well, anything I would say would have to be backed up by Neil, so maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Shall I pick it then? Um, so, yeah, if Cherry Twist is the, the neutral place, the safe place, then uh, any uh, agreement that is made as to how to take forward the ideas from the hackathon, how to launch those ships, can be codified. The goal is to codify them and to have them visible and trackable and governable on, on the Cherry Twist platform. Yeah, and it's 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 actually uh, I'm very happy that you asked this question, uh, Nick, because um, I'm at actually interested uh, to participate uh, personally in uh, at least one of the projects that can come out of momentum uh, created by the teams in the uh, Sovereign Nature Challenge in the, in Sovereign Nature Track, which is about marine biodiversity in the Sargasso Sea. So, so I already have some funding for that project uh, ready to go. Uh, the good news is that there are also all kinds of grants. So uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try to see how we can bridge that. So, so this challenge is actually a really good environment, right? To, to get input to uh, what, the, what this part of Chair Twist should do. Yeah. Uh, the same goes, by the way, for, for a couple of other challenges, like uh, um, the freight packaging uh, challenge from TVM in the Internet of Logistics track, as well as the uh, opening up uh, real estate uh, uh, challenge with uh, Cadaster, the Ministry of the Interior, and uh, Fibre. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and to be just add one more comment into that is that uh, you know Odyssey is very much the, the partner for a lot of these challenges, and they will continue to play a crucial role in in the challenges and the framing and basically managing, say the interface with the existing world into the the more digital world. Um, so you know they, you know, it, it's uh, the it won't be a standalone. I feel like launching of challenges within the current challenges after the momentum, but. That'll continue still probably within the, the, the Odyssey uh, as a partner, but the ability to do it will be critical. The ability to, to have that kind of challenge definition and launching is critical. Yep. Um, I see a couple more questions here. One really simple. Will this new platform be open source? Yes, that is clear. But then I see uh, the next question in line is uh, DAO is the way to go. Fantastic. What's, uh, what's your thoughts on the DAO? Can we go a little bit deeper there? Uh, yes, sure. certainly happy to dive into it. I mean, so if you look within the context of a challenge, you want to have essentially a way to formalize agreements between members of that community. Uh, DAO is certainly one way of formalizing it. You could also have signed manifestos. It's also a sort of agreement. Uh, but if you can do uh, a DAO where you actually have code as law or a smart contract underneath it, uh, then that's great. It gives a lot of clarity. Um, but we also still have to make sure that that is understandable and accessible to people who maybe aren't down at the DAO or smart contract level. Great. Um, I see a question here from a familiar name, Leekler. I'm assuming that is uh, uh, Leekler from here in Groningen. Um, Leekler de Vies, yeah. There, there can't be Probably. that many Leeklers in the world. Um, he says, if Cherry Twist is open source, how will you ensure it is owned by the people and not left to be abandoned? Very genuine uh, comment, I think, or question. Yes, I mean, this is, uh, I think, for any open source project is uh, to keep looking how to create the maximum amount of value um, with and for the uh, participants and stakeholders in the community. Users, users first. Um, then there's uh, the people who have an interest in, uh, in the adoption of uh, a certain system uh, or a protocol or what have you. And then, of course, it's all the contributors that feel appreciated, that feel like that they, they... I think um, we, had a, we have an interview uh, online with Christopher Allen uh, where he eloquently said that the, uh, when they were doing SSL-TLS, they out-collaborated the com competition 
basically. So yeah. it, if you allow anyone to be part of this, um, right, then you have to, the other one has to make a, um, a conscious decision to not be part of it, to actually do something else. Um, and, and I think that's, a, that's something we, we also learned a lot during, uh, during Private Tracer, what the culmination of all these uh, organizations that bring different capacities uh, into this community can have a tremendous amount of f drive and, and force uh, to, to achieve uh, a lot. And of course, uh, it would be remiss if I didn't uh, turn the question right back on Leekler himself. Hi, Leekler. Um, if you want to make sure it doesn't get abandoned, Get involved, yep. cherrytwist.org. You, uh, you know where to find Neil. Um, mm. I, I, I saw the, this, this question at the end of the list that I thought was just funny personally. Are these two guys going to be talking at the actual hackathon as well? <laughs> and the answer to that is quite simply no, because there is no hackathon. It's, it's done. It's gone. We will I, be I, part I, of I, momentum, I, but we're not going to be set here. I have a vision. <laughs> I have a vision that at the beginning of momentum, I, I, I can talk for hours. For hours. And, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's you and me they're talking about. Maybe it's you and Neil. Um, yeah. We're all going to be involved with momentum, but don't worry. No, but it's, it's not going to look We're not going like to do that. Stuff. No. We're but we don't do this at, 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 we didn't do this at the previous hackathons either, right? I mean, no. Uh, it, it was more like, but ca ca was can we keep this as short as possible and just get going, you yeah. know? And uh, so no, <laughs> no worries about that. I see, uh, I see questions from people saying, how can I get involved? How can I help both with uh, Momentum and uh, Cherry Twist? For Cherry Twist, it's easy. Go to cherrytwist.org. There's a form there. Those who are offering to do things like beta testing and wondering how Jedi can get involved, um, trust us, we will get to you just as soon as we need you. Um, it is also nice. Cherry Twist. Uh, sounds like a Coke. It sounds like a Coke. Uh, well, uh, the music. Uh, sorry, the the computer you're using sounds like a fruit. Yeah. Right. And Google means one with a million zeros after it. I mean, it, or is it a billion zeros? I don't know. It's a gigantic number. Depends if it's Google Plex or Google. I think. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, I'm just scrolling through. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, there's a question about unity. We're not going to answer that. Um, <laughs> and it looks like at the moment the top voted question is about Odyssey swag. Can we expect, I mean, you know, to be fair, we are known for the swag. We are known for the stickers. We are known for the epic posters. I can imagine there might be logistical issues, but uh, what's your thoughts on that? We embrace the spirit of the swag. We embrace the spirit of the swag. No worries. And uh, Neil, do you, do you see Cherry Twist becoming a sticker all over everyone's laptops or? <laughs> yeah, potentially, potentially. Uh, and I did see one other uh, question further down the list that I thought is probably worth uh, just picking up on, which is, you know, what's the incentive model work within Cherry Twist? Great uh, question. And uh, I think you're exactly the person to answer it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, you know, so within the context of a particular challenge, the incentives will be as per defined within that challenge. Uh, Cherry Twist as a foundation is set up on a partner model uh, so that, uh, you know, it's there for people who want to contribute in a systematic way and to be associated with Cherry Twist in a systematic way and to understand what this kind of collaboration can mean in a systematic way for uh, open innovation. Uh, so, the, you know, the, there, there's two levels. There's the incentive level inside the challenge that's as per challenge. And it's a sense of level for, other, for the Cherry Twist as a foundation and uh, community, and that's on the partnership model. And of course, um, quite frankly, if we do a really shitty job, and when I say we, I mean you, uh, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it doesn't work and, and it doesn't fulfill its promises, then you don't have to use it. It's not an enforced. Yeah. No, it's the thing. same thing as watching this, uh, watching this live stream, right? Uh, yeah. You can do it if you want. So, and and um, I think uh, f for the teams, there's also an incentive because, um, uh, in the end, Cherry Twist should become a tool every team would want, want to, to use. To launch your thing, your pilot, your, your yeah. project, your... Yeah. So, so uh, 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 any but, challenge uh, at the Odyssey uh, program is an invitation to, to build an ecosystem yeah. right? uh, and to leverage that in a multi-stakeholder collaborative environment. And that's why the tool's being built to make that as simple as possible because it's a complex thing. And yeah. not all the complexity is going to go away. Because that's, that's complex about... doesn't necessarily mean complicated, right? True. So, uh, True. Yeah. Um, we're uh, just about out of time, so uh, I think it's time to start wrapping up this. Neil, do you have any last comments from a Cherry Twist perspective? 
please engage. Please engage. Uh, and of course, I can assume you're excited for momentum. Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> Rucha, anything to add? Anything we missed? I don't think so. I think, uh, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next months and also looking forward to get, er if, if anyone has any input or ideas or critique. Uh, critique or worries or questions or what have you, just contact us. Everything is welcome. It can only make it better. Yeah, and uh, rugge at odyssey.org, right? Sure, Nick. Yes, no thank worries. you. No worries. <laughs> um, okay, we're uh, we're done for this session. My beer is empty. Um, for you folks who've been uh, dialed in listening to this or maybe watching this afterwards, thanks so much for joining us. We hope that we gave you some clarity around the stuff we can. We know that there is still a lot of questions that you have out there, and, and not these kind of questions, but also the, the more philosophical. We're okay with that. We're going to get to answering those over the summer. Um, we basically don't have summer here now. No vacation time. It's down to the grind. Uh, reminder, if you want to help out with Cherry Twist, then cherrytwist.org. If that's not your thing, remember Touching Base 3 will come just after summer. You can expect an invitation soon. We're just uh, nailing down the dates. That will be the kickoff for the post-summer season where the momentum we're gathering now goes up another notch. Yep. Um, there'll be plenty to do between now and momentum in November. And if you're not sure and if you don't take a uh, uh, too long a vacation, be curious, keep digging, keep talking to your challenge leads, keep talking to other teams, keep focusing on that problem. It's For me, it's a gift to have been given from Corona this much extra time to keep digging deeper and deeper. It's going to make everything that comes out of it, I hope, I believe, so much stronger. It will do. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. Tech crew, Jeremy, thanks so much. Crystal in the background. I hope the chat in YouTube was good. Thank you and goodbye. Bye, <laughs> all. Bye, bye.